Hello, civilized world. This is news from Russia, aka Runglish News by Albatros. This is the test episode, guys, so your feedback is very important. Let me know in comments if you like this video, and I will try to make it weekly on this live channel. Nowadays, YouTube bans a lot of Russian channels. So just in case, I created a Telegram channel for this news. Guys, subscribe not to lose my content if YouTube bans me too. Due to my nomad lifestyle now, I'm creating my music and videos at home. And uh, it's not an easy thing, guys. Like, for example, this video right now I'm recording in my bedroom. You would see it right now here. So, I'm trying to create something like a portable home studio, but I need to buy a lot of stuff for this. If you guys want to support my channel, all the, all the donation links in the description. I will not be telling you about some very basic trendy news. All the mass media will probably deliver it to you faster than me. I wanna give you a chance to see some news from Russia, which probably will never appear on uh, the Western mass media. Some of them will be funny, some of them will be serious, so I hope you guys will get more information and have fun with me. But I remind you that I'm not pretending to be the news. It's just some funny videos from my channel and I want you to have fun with me. This is not mass media, guys. Don't take me as mass media. I'm just giving you my opinion on some cool things, which I want to share with you. So let's grab some chayok and pagnali. What's going on in Moscow after Kremlin drone attack? You all probably heard about the recent drone attack to Kremlin. On May 3rd, at night, two drones fell down on the dome of some Kremlin buildings. Russian officials immediately said that it's Ukrainians. Ukrainians, of course, said that no, 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 it's not us. It's probably somebody in Russia. The United States says, no, we don't recommend to Ukraine to do this. So, so many things are still unclear. That's why nobody knows who's these drones, why and what the hell is going on. But you probably haven't heard what was going on in the center of Moscow that day. Because of the crazy level of uh, air defense, no GPS has been working. Probably now it's still not working in the center of Moscow. The majority of taxi drivers in Russia are immigrants. So they have no idea where is your house when you get a taxi and they need a Navi app to take you home. Without the Navi app, no chance they're gonna take you home. And just imagine. No navigators work in the center of Moscow. It was a taxi collapse. Car sharing also was not working and many, many problems like this. It was insane. It's still like this in the center of Moscow. And this is why I think the drone attack is a kind of weird, because the level of air defense and the level of electronic warfare around the Kremlin is something beyond the imagination. Even your fitness bracelet is not working perfectly. So what can we say about drones? That's why I don't believe it was something serious. And of course now you cannot use any drones in Moscow at all. It's totally banned. That's why we will not see more beautiful videos like this. The Supreme Court of Russia has declared that insulting officials is a crime. To clarify this law, the Supreme Court stated that if you insult any official in Russia, you will be fined for $500 or the fine equivalent to your salary for three months or one year of community service. You may wonder, what about criticism? What's the difference between the insult and criticism? Like, for example, when you say, you are stupid motherfucker, or when you say, I think this politician does his job not in the best way. Where is the difference? I will tell you. In Russia, it depends of how upset is that person, who you said shit about. If he's very, very, very upset, and especially if he's related to military, the expertise, I mean the forensic expertise, will say that you not only abusing that person, insulting that person, but you are also discreditating Russian military and saying fakes about uh, the war in Ukraine. And this is much more serious punishment. You will spend years in prison for this. If the guy is not really upset or he's not related to the military, 
you pay 500 dollars, but still 500 dollars it's big money for the majority of Russians. You probably heard that a couple of weeks ago in France the woman was arrested because she called Macron uh, a piece of trash or something like that in her Facebook. Freedom of speech! Yay! Shit happens when you have military censorship. A theater show in Russia was award-winning for more than two years, but now it's considered to be a justifying of terrorism. Two girls who created this show are now arrested and accused in justifying terrorism. And everybody is in shock, because this story is absolutely opposite to justifying terrorism or promoting terrorism. It's a performance about how ISIS terrorist organization brainwashes Russian women to make them uh, go to Syria, to make them marry terrorists, to change their life that way. And uh, it's actually based on true stories, based on documents. So it's more like a theatrical documentary about that very specific relationships. And for two years, it was award-winning, many awards, very positive reviews by critics, everybody loves it, and now boom, it's promoting terrorism. This is why, guys, I prefer to make this news be not in Russia, because one incorrect joke, one incorrect word I say, and uh, I can be arrested too. I love my country, I love Russia, I wish all the best to Russia, but I don't want to be in prison, as well as in the trench, so sorry, <laughs> I will be making this news be in the side. The man in a bumblefuck village called Dolgi Buyerak had a restaurant, and the name of the restaurant was Cambridge. And some guy, whose son is participating to the war in Ukraine, started complaining to the local government, like, hey, what the fuck? They promote the Western values, they promote Western stuff instead of Russian stuff, force them to remain the restaurant. And can you imagine the local authorities really started working on renaming the restaurant? I mean on forcing the guys who own the restaurant to rename it. They were saying like it's an insult to use the enemy's naming for Russian restaurants. The owners of course decided not to mess with the government and they changed the name to what? What you guys think? To something super Russian like Berezka, Zarya, Vanya, Moskva, no? They changed it to Germes how Germes is related to Russia and Germes is actually Greek. Greece is okay or what? What makes this fact especially funny is that almost all the Russian authorities, especially the richest of them, have their kids studying in Cambridge, in Oxford, in Yale, in MIT, in Harvard. They love these universities and they send their kids there. So what the fuck? The name of the restaurant in a bumblefuck village, it's a problem because it's Western values. But your families studying in that Western enemy universities is not a problem. Your wives and your relatives chilling in Courchevel in France, drinking champagne, it's not a problem. What if somebody will hostage any of this guy and start blackmailing Russian politicians using this. It could be a giant problem, but nobody cares. For this, Europe is not enemy. Europe is okay. Let's go drink champagne. Five years in prison for cursing to a kid with the letter Z on his head. In Yekaterinburg, 56 years old man saw a guy wearing a hat with the letter Z. And he started cursing at him like, hey, what the fuck are you wearing? Put it off, you stupid ass. And you know, it's Russia, cameras everywhere. So that stuff was filmed, made public, and now this guy can go to prison. The boy's father is taking part in the war right now. And uh, his relatives started complaining and the criminal case was opened. So now this man can go to prison. I don't know what will be the case, discreditation of Russian military or what, but that's real shit. Genius mobilization strategy in Ukraine. A new McDonald's have been recently opened in Dnepropetrovsk and as usually in Ukraine and in Russia, when the new McDonald's opens, it's a big line in there. Even not in the new McDonald's, in every McDonald's. Russian people and Ukrainian people are not predominantly fed, but we love McDonald's, that's true. And 
Ukrainian military commissariat officers came to that McDonald's and started giving draft notes in all the guys in that big line. The girls who live in this neighborhood immediately came up with the business idea. Then they go buy a burger for you if you don't want to show up there just in case they will give you a draft note. So you pay extra to the girl, wait in the car or at, at home and she goes buy burgers for you and delivers it to you. Because you know, girls by now cannot be drafted in Ukraine, fortunately. Capitalism forever. Even better mobilization strategy in Russia. The State Duma adopted the new law on electronic draft notes and a special registry of military service. Now the authorities say that they gonna use it only for the regular draft to the compulsory military service, not for mobilization. But you know, it's Russia. Today they say no, tomorrow they will say yes. How it works? They send you an electronic draft note. and. It doesn't matter, did you actually receive it or not? To your Gosuslugi service or to your email. After they send it to you, your name shows up in that registry and it means that you have been notified. They don't care if you haven't seen this electronic draft note at all. And if you don't show up after some days, I don't remember how many days, probably 20 days, if you don't show up after this notification, they will not let you leave the country. They will stop you at the airport if you try. They will uh, ban your driving license. They will not let you to be like self self-employed person, you know, to make business. The banks will not give you loans. So they try to make your life as horrible as possible until you go show up at the military commissary. I should say once again, by now it's only for the compulsory military service, not for mobilization, but who knows what's gonna be tomorrow, we see together. The train conductor in Ukraine arrested for illegally transporting reservists to Poland. The guy was charging $2,500 for a hideout in the ventilation of his train car. So like you pay him money, he hides you in there, train goes to Poland, in Poland you go away. But probably his competitors messed up things for him because in comparison with uh, other guys, it was very cheap. As I know from people who already left Ukraine illegally, now uh, the average check is $10,000. From $10,000 to $15,000 to leave the country illegally. And this guy was charging two and a half. Crazy dumping. That's why probably his competitors messed this shit up for him. The Ministry of Sport of Ukraine has prohibited Ukrainian athletes to compete at the competitions where Russian and Belarusian sportsmen are presented to. This is very strange. How many careers of their own sportsmen they will spoil? Just imagine a championship of like anything. I don't know. Tennis, whatever. And uh, Ukrainian team shows up and Russian team shows up too. And Ukrainian team is like, oh, no, 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 we don't participate. No, 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 no. We go home just because Russians showed up. How many careers of Ukrainian sportsmen will be spoiled? Ukrainian sportsmen are not guilty in the war at all. Russia is back to top 10 of the world's economies. I'm happy about that because, you know, in such a situation to have any progress at all, it's very difficult and being back to top 10, it's good news for Russia. Of course, it's not even close to top three. It's not even close to United States and China, but still, let's hope Russia will keep the pace and the war will be over soon so we can collaborate again and visit each other again easily because now it's a nightmare to go for example from the United States to Russia or from Russia to the United States. You have to fly through Dubai or through Turkey or some other countries in Africa so now the trip is not easy and not cheap. By the way guys if you need to fly to Russia, but you don't know how to do it with no problems, I recommend you Cabot Travel Center. Henry is an experienced traveler to Russia and also he can help you 
with establishing the business in Russia, not only with documents and uh, visas and flight tickets. It's a small boutique-style traveling assistance company based in Boston, Massachusetts. Henry helped me and my family with our trip to Argentina. Everything went really fine. So, guys, I guarantee the perfect quality of this service. I know Henry in person. He's a nice specialist. So, if you need to go to Russia, but you're scared of the war, sanctions, some other problems, grab the phone, call Henry. He will resolve it for you. And you will have a nice trip to Russia with no problems at all. Parallel imports to the Russian Federation have led to a shortage of the warehouses in all CIS countries. All the goods we've been importing to Russia directly from Europe and United States, for example, now are going through the back door. And this back door is countries like Kazakhstan, Uzbekistan, Kyrgyzstan and many more. These countries now facing a crazy shortage of the warehouses. There is too much stuff coming, the demand for the warehouses is so high, but the supply is so limited, they physically don't have enough space to build that warehouses so fast. So maybe Russian construction companies will take part in building that warehouses in uh, CIS countries to grow that business faster and parallel import will be working even better than now. Japan now imports more seafood from Russia than in any time before. Thank you sanctions. While many countries try to ban Russian stuff, smart Japanese guys try to buy more because Russian seafood is very good quality, very good price, so Japanese guys buy as much as they can and we can supply even more guys. Go buy, no problem, tomorrow we will give you even more seafood. Funny fact, right now I'm living in Argentina. And you guys probably heard about langustinos, Argentinian shrimps. It's like big, very tasty shrimps. In Russia, it's a kind of delicious food, expensive. I buy the box, two kilos for like 35, 40 dollars. Big price for an average Russian, it's a lot. When I was flying to Argentina, I was thinking like, oh, I will eat langustinos every day because here they catch it like in front of your house in the ocean, it should be everywhere, it should be cheap. How surprised I was to see that langustinos here is absolutely the same price as in Russia. Identical. So just imagine for how cheap Argentinians export it. Because, you know, somebody bought langustinos from Argentinians, transferred them through half of the planet, and the final retail price in Russia is the same, still is the same as in Argentina. So how cheap is to be exported at, and how expensive Argentinians sell it to their own people. <laughs> this is nonsense. Argentina is bound to join BRICS. Very good news. Welcome, Argentina. You know, BRICS is an abbreviation made from the names of the countries. So what could it be now? BRICAS or BRICSA? <laughs> I don't know, but that's okay. Welcome, Argentina. Bienvenido, Argentina. In Argentina, the Russian Victory Day celebration was attacked by some Russophobic people. In Russia, we have a very important tradition related to the May 9th. You know, May 9th, it's a day of uh, victory over uh, Nazi Germany in World War II. So, we have a tradition which is called Besmertny Polk. If we translate it literally, it will be like Eternal Regiment. Soviet Union lost more than 25 million people in that war, so almost every family has a grandpa or grandma who was the hero of uh, that war or who died uh, on that war or took part on that war, who is a veteran. That's why for everybody it's a very sensitive thing, very important holiday. And uh, what's the tradition? You print the photo of your relative who took part in the war or who's the hero or veteran of the war and uh, all the people come to one place and make a kind of parade with that pictures you know i will i will show you pictures now on screen it's very beautiful looking very sensitive lots of respect to people who protected the world from nazis and it happens not only in Russia, but in many countries, because veterans of that war from uh, Soviet Union live in many countries now. And the same thing happened in Argentina too. 
in Buenos Aires some guys, Russophobic people with uh, anti-Russia banners, that kind of stuff, they came to this celebration and started yelling some curses very loud, like trying to make a mess in there. Argentinians didn't appreciate that move and uh, Argentinian people with Argentinian police helped Russians to make it nice, to take that guys away, so uh, the parade went fine with no problems. For me, it sounds so stupid that Ukrainians trying to ban Besmertny Polk and uh, all the traditions related to the Victory Day and the World War II because it's like, you know, related to Russia. It's so stupid. Ukrainians lost more than 8 million people in that war too. 8 million people. Why not give them some respect? Why not show some honor to that people? What's the problem? I don't understand. The same shit happens with Ukrainian education system. They try to ban Dostoevsky and Pushkin and Tolstoy at schools because these famous writers are Russian. Tosti. What the hell? They lived like more than 100 years ago. How could they know that it's gonna be the war or whatever? Just imagine in Russia, what if we start banning Schiller or Goethe <laughs> because they are German and they've been living in Germany like centuries before the World War II started, centuries before Hitler. Or just imagine the United States will start banning some British stuff. Russian magic. Yandex browser added automatic video translation from Chinese language. For two years already, Yandex Browser has a magical function. It can translate videos from foreign languages on the go, in real time. You just hit play any English video on YouTube and boom, Neural Engine translates the voice, it makes the Russian voice over. It's a magic. It was magic with English or German or Spanish or uh, French, but with Chinese it's absolute magic. It's another internet, you know. What's going on in Chinese internet? Pff, it's totally different from everything we know. And now Chinese internet gets opened for Russia. Thank you, Yandex. By the way, Yandex does not pay me. It's not a commercial integration. But I will be happy if Yandex start paying me. Yandex! <laughs> Tinder leaves Russia. No more swipes and no more matches. I think it's more good news than bad news, because first, Tinder wasn't really popular in Russia. We had local services like, for example, Mamba, which twice more popular than Tinder. And also, it will be one more step for development our own new dating services. You know, we have a social media called VK, which is like Facebook, but 100 times better. It's like Facebook on maximum settings. So. VK is developing their own dating service already and it will be probably released right after Tinder leaves Russia, upcoming summer. So, guys, if you go to Russia and want to date with Russian girls, you know what to use. KFC is back to Russia with a new name. Rostix. Yum Brands, an American company, sold all the businesses in Russia to the franchisee. And they changed the name to Rostix and uh, Everything will be the same, same menu, same stuff, but with a little bit naming change, like for example, the Boxmaster will be Rostmaster or something like that. By the way, KFC in Russia is special. They love to rent very old Soviet style buildings and it looks hilarious when you see KFC in a kind of Stalin style castle. I have it in my native town in Petrozavodsk. St. Petrozavodsk, horrible industrial city. So right now I'll be in touch with my special reporter Bagira aka Natasha and she will show you how KFC looks in Russian province. Hello, dear followers. Welcome to the Russia, Karelia. My name is Natasha, aka Bagira. I will show the best KFC in the world. In Stalin time it was at the cinema, but now it's place of Polkovnik Sanders. Между прочим, this place не только the cinema and был was and это it was. Nightclub, uh, popular nightclub Победа, and I uh, was go. Нет, I was in it. 
Короче, я здесь первый раз была на своей первой дискотеке. Меня пропустили, мне еще не было 18. Подписывайтесь, ставьте лайки, мне уже есть 18. Welcome! Actually, this place shouldn't work because uh, KC left Russia and our country is big and pigeons with meals still didn't come here. So we can eat some famous chicken. Mm. It's not bad, but Russian chicken with сковородочкой with пюрешечкой much better. Much better! But I show it in next new reports. Все правильно сказал? Have, have a nice day. Uh, нет? Day. Ты ее просыта. Дьявола. Have a nice day. Everybody. See you soon. In Краснодарский край, a drunk man has been pulled over by cops because he was driving. Above. I'm not kidding, guys. Стой, 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 стой. Стоп, 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 стоп. Все, вылазим, вылазим, приехали. As he attached a motorcycle engine to the buff, made the wheels and kind of hand grip steering wheel, and was hitting the road, being totally wasted. Cops stopped him, and he has no driving license, of course. And he was drunk, so the guy got in trouble. Interesting, what if he is sober and with a driving license, but still wearing the bath? Is it okay? <laughs> I don't know, probably not. A French guy rammed the barrier at the border crossing between Poland and Russia. For those who live in cave, I remind that Russia and Poland has a border. Because That tiny piece of land called Kaliningradskaya Oblast in Europe is a Russian land. That's why we have the border with Poland. So the French guy smashed the barrier because he extremely needed to get to Russia. <laughs> Looks like I know who's this guy. The guy said that he wanted to start a new life in Russia, that's why he was rushing, but they didn't let him in, because he had not enough documents, and also he had some ammunition for his hunting gun in his car, <laughs> instead of documents, that's why they find him and send him back. The ABC of Special Operation Some Russian guys made the series of cartoons, made the ABC of special operations, which in very ironic way give you vital advices how not to die at your first day of the war. Today you will learn how to prepare the trenches. Life is motion, and the most important motion on the front line is digging. It's better to be tired than to be attacked by surprise. Especially for the guys who support me on Patreon, I made a Runglish voiceover of these cartoons, so you can go watch them, guys. The link is in the description. If you wanna join the club, just choose the tire according to your budget and let's go, let's have fun together. This support is very vital to me and lots of fun stuff for you. Sberbank launches the transactions in Chinese Yuan. This is probably one more step to dedolarization of Russia. The government probably wants people to have less dollars and more, let's say, friendly currencies. And not bad move, actually. Maybe it will make the connection between Russia and China more close, and who knows what's gonna be in future. It was the first experimental episode of Runglish News by Albatros. Guys, let me know in comments if you like these videos. I will try to make it weekly. Let me know what are you interested in in Russia. Natasha and Marina will show it to you in the upcoming episodes. See you soon, guys. Peace to all the world. Stay safe.